Learn how to perform a wet end rebuild on a John Blue NGP piston pump. You can reference your specific NGP piston pump manual at johnblue.com. For this demonstration, we're using pump model NGP 6055HY. However, the same procedure can be applied to all John Blue NGP LM, L, and LF series piston pumps. Tools and material needed are hammer, Loctite or similar gasket sealant, flathead screwdriver, pick, 7 16th wrench, two 9 16th wrenches, 5 8th wrench, two 3 quarter wrenches, shaft bullet or tape, SAE 8090 gear oil, packing punch, wet end gaskets, plunger packing, shaft packing, snap ring pliers, and a clamp to secure pump to table. Let's begin. Step 1. Prepare pump for rebuild. Remove top oil plug before emptying. Remove the bottom oil plug and drain oil. Secure the pump to a sturdy structure as shown. Step 2. Remove valve cover to remove valves and O-rings. Remove the four bolts on the valve cover. After removing the valve cover, valves and O-rings can be seen. Step 3. Remove piston. Remove the top and bottom half-inch by 5-inch bolts connecting the inboard and outboard cylinders. Slide the outboard cylinder off the piston. You may need to use a hammer to remove cylinder off the piston. Remove old gaskets. Remove piston by removing nut with 5 8 inch wrench and turn counterclockwise. Simply unscrew piston off the rod by turning counterclockwise. Step 4. Remove the rest of the components up to the pump's housing. Pull the stuffing box off the rod. Packing rings are shown inside the bore. The packing will be removed in step 7. Remove the four bolts that attach the crosshead to the crankcase. Remove the crosshead with packing. Remove packing from the crosshead. Remove old gasket material. Clean around rod. Inspect piston rod and make sure there aren't any grooves or scratches. Make sure there's no slack and everything moves up and down freely. Remove old gasket. Step 5. Rebuild the crosshead. Remove gasket remains and apply Loctite or similar gasket sealant to bolt holes. Install new gasket. The gasket is oblong, so place it up and down, not side to side. Make sure orientation is correct as shown. Take a bolt and push all the way through the crosshead then slide the crosshead up to the crankcase. Reassemble the crosshead. Tighten the four bolts in a cross pattern to secure down. crosshead. Go across, tighten this one down, go up, 
tighten this one down, and then the last one at the bottom. Step six, install rod packing. Packing set includes O-ring, packing V-set, packing washer, and spring. Use shaft bullet or cover threads with tape to protect packing. First, install O-ring. Next, insert thick spacer with the flat facing crankcase. Install the four packing rings with the correct orientation as shown. Place thin spacer with flat facing away from crankcase. Add steel washer. With a packing punch, use a hammer to insert the packing set into the correct position. Remove bullet. Add a new inboard gasket. Lastly, insert spring. Step 7. In the stuffing box, remove used packing and install new packing. Tools and materials needed are snap ring pliers, flathead screwdriver, packing punch, packing V-set, two packing washers, spring, snap ring. Remove all the packing components as shown. Remove old gasket. After removing all packing, install the new components into the stuffing box. The packing box assembly is similar to step 6. However, it does not include a lead o-ring. You can also use the back end of a punch to, to hammer them in if you have to, if you don't have one of those tools. Last piece is your flat piece. A silver washer goes in, spring. Next spring. An additional washer and a snap ring are added at the end of the assembly. Make sure snap ring is seated properly. Just like that. Step 8. Install stuffing box and plunger. Insert bullet or apply tape on rod to protect seals from damage. And make sure grease fitting is on the right hand side. Slide stuffing box up to crosshead. Remove bullet. Place new gasket on stuffing box. Install piston as shown. Once piston is threaded all the way, install nut on threaded rod and secure against piston. Step 9. Slide inboard cylinder and install piston packing. Slide the inboard cylinder on the piston with the correct orientation as shown. The grooves for packing rings should be facing out. Shown are the piston packing rings. With lip facing the housing, slide one of the rubber rings on the piston. Place the components in the correct order as shown with the packing lip facing out. The next one is a paper gasket. It goes on just like this. I just kind of filter that in there a little bit, keep everything lined up. That goes on next, and this is a mirror image of one to the other. They 
to taper edge out, just like so. Step 10. Complete rebuild by installing outboard cylinder and valves. Place the outboard cylinder on piston. Install the two half inch by five inch bolts that connect the inboard and outboard cylinders, but do not tighten. We do not tighten these bolts first. Okay, these are actually the last two bolts that we will tighten once we get through with the assembly. The reason being is you've got these two surfaces here. See how they can get. So leave these loose. Do this side over here. Press the valve spring to determine if valve is strong or weak. Insert the two strong valves outwards on top. Insert the two weak valves inwards on bottom. Press on these, it goes, comes in, goes in, goes through, comes out, goes back out here for the discharge. Replace O-rings in valve bores. The inlet and outlet ports have O-rings that may differ in size depending on your pump. You'll have to do two O-rings at the top and the bottom. So you simply just filter those in. That's it. Now I just kind of go back and make sure everything's seated properly. Reinstall the valve cover and insert bolts. Secure the valve cover by tightening the four bolts in a cross pattern. Make sure that all components are lined up and vertical before tightening the two half inch by five inch bolts. Make it snug first. Then tighten until flush. This process brings the inboard and outboard cylinders into alignment. That's fine. You just want to make sure this is straight up and down. See, if you come to the end, see how it's kind of cantered a little bit? But if you move it, it straightens up and down line. So, of course, that takes... Two, Take three, two three-quarter inch wrenches to tighten. pump wet end is aligned properly with crankcase of pump. You can see here. Yeah. Get 
this one tightened up. You should see that gap start closing down at the bottom. Step 11, refill oil and regrease. Use 8090 gear oil to refill. Make sure you refer to the manual for your specific pump to determine its oil capacity. Replace top vent plug as shown and grease all zerks. Two to three pumps of grease is usually ample. If you have any questions regarding the NGP piston pump wet end rebuild or any other John Blue support questions, please contact our knowledgeable and friendly support team at 1-800-253-2583. Thank <laughs> you.